Welcome to Discover Energy Work, and we're really lucky today. I'm really, really lucky to have the man that taught me Yun Method, Julian Will. And Julian is a certified Yun Method instructor. He started as a hypnotherapist and um, regression therapist, and then over a period of time, he became more and more enamored with Yun Method. And also, he was telling me he just gets fantastic results. So welcome, Julian. Thank you so much for coming down. Thank you, Richard. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Yeah. So I, what I wanted to do was, I want to go back to, because you and I, well, we know each other for a long time, but I mean, like, I'm sure there's anecdotes which you haven't shared with me about when you first experienced energy, where you said, oh, wow, this energy is real. Can you think back to that moment, like that watershed moment in your life where you said, like, wow, there's energy. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the discovery of energy was pretty subtle for me. Uh, I mean, I remember the it's early 2000, I think, uh, we had a friend who did a Reiki class, and she really wanted to give us some Reiki session, and we had no idea what Reiki was or what energy even was back then. So, we're like, okay. So, it was nice. It was a nice, pleasant experience, but, and then I forgot about it, right? Life right. goes on. I went back to my, my very square world where everything was explained and understood and everybody agreed. Um, and then most things um, took a different turn when we moved to Hong Kong with my wife, Dolores. And um, for some personal reason of hers, like she had all kinds of physical issues that couldn't really mm -hmm. be uh, addressed by the, the Western traditional way of uh, approaching things. Uh, so we ended up... Um, uh, or she ended up opening up to different types of modalities. And uh, at first she wouldn't tell me about it because she knew I wouldn't even <laughs> understand or even maybe accept, I don't know. Right. Uh, because I was very uh, normal back then, right? Yeah. So she had a few sessions with that lady in Hong Kong and then uh, very, very quickly she said, my teacher is coming. Uh, it was doing kinesiology for emotional release. Uh, and she said, you should take that class because then you can do it yourself. And I went, oh, do it myself? What do you mean? I don't do that, right? Right, right. So she actually came home and told me about it. And, and at the same time, I could see that the, the few sessions she had, something changed in her. Like Things improved and it was getting better and so on. So I was like, she asked me to go with her to that, that workshop. I'm like, okay, I really don't want to go. But anyway, I went there. And, and for me and, and her, for the two of us, it was like a, a massive step because we, we, we opened that door to, uh, to self-mastery in a way, you could say, because it was not part of our reality that we could actually be our own specialists. Okay? We could help ourselves. So we took that workshop that was back in, I don't know, 20, 2003 or four. I don't know. Um, and, Do you remember and, what you were thinking? Like, because in my mind, I've got this idea of like, um, you know, you were um, a younger marketing yeah. specialist and you'd given out like probably thousands and thousands of dollars on chemistry science you know yeah. tests what's going on and then somebody's i don't know waving their hand and saying now you're better and then you're saying something yeah. else is, is <clears throat> really it was, happened uh, it was a bit disturbing at the beginning to use the truth um <clears throat> and I, I remember that, that, that first workshop went there and it was my first experience, except that, that experience with my friend who did Reiki on me, which was well, nice. But right, it was right. my first experience of like seeing and being in a group and, and within like five minutes, my wife was on stage and crying in front of everybody, which she would never do. And I was like, okay, right. there's something happening here. What's going on, right? Mm. Um, so there's lots of questions for sure about what's that about. And, and that's why we kept going for more and we're like craving information. And I remember like we had, uh, b before we, we had our daughter, uh, we had like seven, yeah, maybe seven years where we couldn't stop going in workshops, different modalities, because it was fascinating for us. It was like we, op we opened that door. It was walking into Alibaba's uh, cavern where like, all these treasures were there. And it was so much. And, and I remember feeling so small and so, um, um, yeah, like how can I even comprehend that there's so much out there right and and eventually you get to a point where yeah you start grasping it without understanding because it's beyond understanding when you talk about energy right. it's everything nothing right so when mm. you get to the point where you realize there's nothing to understand just go for it right um so yeah at the beginning it was really like a 
like a like a slap in the face. It was like, where have you been all this time, right? <laughs> time mm. to wake up now. Mm. So, mm. did you feel a bit betrayed? Like, just like no, I, no not really actually, because what, the thing is, very quickly I started to realize that th this energy that was very new to me actually was always there, right? So it was like, well. I've been slightly betrayed in the sense, yeah, that the way I was uh, formatted, so to speak, or uh, the information I received. But even then, looking back, I realized when I grew up, uh, I mean, homeopathy in the family was the, 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 the go-to uh, remedy for everything, right? We had a, right. uh, an aunt who was a very, uh, uh, very good MD, specialized in homeopathy. So the whole family was using homeopathy. I remember we had like a huge box with like, hundreds of different tubes and stuff so that was energy i mean that's energy medicine right I remember it's like the, the, and, and in france too like if you talk to people at uh, first they're like oh this is not true blah 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 but if you start asking questions you realize that in every family there is always like a, a go-to guy or woman in the village where the, you go when you're in pain like a, like energy walk or walker but nobody talks about it right right um, it's starting to shift now but mm. and i remember my grandmother was was very uh, traditional religious she would go like regularly seeing the next door next door neighbor in the in the country home where we used to go to have our energy uh, fixed right <laughs> and everybody in the family was like oh yeah cool she went to see her um so th there's lots of little little things like that like that i realized that even though we wouldn't talk about it and and we, we stick to the to the uh, cartesian approach to life but it was always there so I didn't really feel anger or anything like that, no. Oh, well, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I felt totally betrayed. I, I felt like I, I really bought into one. You felt relieved. Oh, that's yeah, nice. I was like, oh, okay, there's more to it because uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was not working for me. Right. So I was like, oh, okay. No, it really okay. wasn't, was it? Yeah. So it really, but, yeah, yeah it's just, it really changed your both say Dolores yes. your wife her yes. life but in that way yeah. it it totally changed the direction of your life in a way can you tell everybody a yes. little bit about that yeah of course so when when we started this uh we're both still working in the, in the corporate world Dolores was a designer and I was uh, uh in business marketing um so we're doing that on the weekend holidays every time we had holidays we go like fly different places to learn new techniques and so on and and my mother passed in 2005, yes, 2005. And that was a huge shock for me. Um, mm. And after that, I, I really got honest and, and realized I couldn't go back to, uh, to that, that regular job I had. So, and I, 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 I couldn't go back to the, that corporate world. I was like, that's, that's not what I want to do. And, Life is too short, right? Like enough. Yeah, enough, isn't that, uh, that that's de that's death, isn't it? Death can so yeah. much bring a new life into us. So, mm -hmm. so I was lucky. Dolores was very supportive. She said, "Okay, fine, quit your job, think about what you want to do." And so it took me quite a while, long while, where I really start thinking about what, what is it that I want to do with my life. And at, at that time, I, it was not part of my reality that I could do what I'm doing now. Right? It was like not even possible. It's, it was not part part of that reality so it took me a lot of time to think about what i want to do and so on and, and i kept asking my question the question what it is that i really enjoy doing what do i love doing right and well eventually i got i got honest i was like oh, i love when i do those those uh, uh sessions on friends and family and i help them and i uh, and, and i dig with them to to make them feel better right and i really love that all that there is to learn there so he, again, the wheel started to turn and said, okay, well, maybe I can do that as a job, right? So uh, first I, 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 I fought it because that was not part of my uh, background, right? I mean, business school, very normal uh, life and so on. But eventually it's kind of settled down and said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become like a therapist. And then things started to, to, to uh, click very quickly. I started to work at uh, Balance in Hong Kong. And... Uh, Right. And um, wasn't there a period uh, so, where you were like on the sofa, like sleeping all the time? Do you... I was on the sofa for like, I think, I'd say a year and a half. You, you slept all day. Well, some people say I was sleeping. Some people say I was meditating. I'll right. let you decide. Right. <laughs> the point is it took me, it was like a, like a process of what I had to go through. And at the end of the day, I came out, okay, let's shift thing. And that's what I'm going to do. So, I, 
I'm, you know, you know, I know the story about the um, um, meeting your hypnosis teacher. Yes, it's a beautiful yeah. story. Do, can I, can you, would you be okay? I know it's quite a private yeah, yeah, story, yeah. but to share that with everybody, because yeah. I went, wow, that's great. And, and that, that story, so after more than a year on my sofa, and I, when I started to decide, okay, that's what I want to do, I had all kinds of different modalities, but I, 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 I couldn't project myself using them as a, as a therapy. So I was like, what, what do I want? And, and that's where I came up to the point that well, I, want to, I want to learn hypnosis, hypnotherapy, right? And um, so I started to look for some classes in Hong Kong. And at the time, there was no classes in English. Uh, and I, I spent like a good month or you know, more than a month looking, looking, going to speak to people. It was all in Mandarin or Cantonese. I was like, oh, sorry, I don't speak that. Um, so I, I gave up. I was like, okay, maybe that's not for me after all, right? And I was like, wait, let's do one more, one more search. So I go on my little Google machine. I type hypnotherapy, learn, learn hypnotherapy Hong Kong. And then the first result is class starting it was starting like in, in two months from from then um, in Hong Kong in English uh, so I called the number it was a number in Singapore and uh, the woman is like well, how do you know about it I'm so well, I googled it I found you and she's like well we didn't put it up yet I'm like okay well I found you anyway I want to sign up right no question she's like well okay but well, the teacher is going to Hong Kong he's going to be there in two weeks you should probably meet him first because it was quite an investment uh, I said, okay, sure, I meet him for sure. So I go meet this guy and uh, I went in the morning and we spent the whole day talking. Like, we spent like, I think, eight hours talking and it was like, it was a great experience, great talk. And obviously, I signed for the class. Mm -hmm. And a week before the class was supposed to start in Hong Kong, he calls me and he said, Julian, I'm really sorry, but I have to cancel the class. I'm like, oh no, no. But he said, but, but. Um, I know you really are motivated and you want to do it. I invite you to come to Singapore. I run the class next month. Um, I'll, uh, it will be the same investment for you because I will pay for your hotel. I was like, what? Okay. So I hang up the phone. I start thinking. And then the, 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 the bit of a red, red signal saying, oh, be careful. What kind of trap is that? What kind of mm. cult are you going in? Things mm. like that, right? Mm. And I was like, no, I mean, I met the guy, I spent the whole day with him, it was great. So I, I took the offer, I went, and um, so I went for two months. It was amazing. I mean, it changed my life. And uh, beautiful mm. man, he's passed now. Uh, another beautiful story of his, is I can, I can share with sure. people here. Is, uh, his son got in an accident on the, uh, on the highway, a car accident, trying to save someone. So he, he witnessed an accident, and he jumped up trying to help the person. So I don't know the details, but and the car ran to him. And he was in a coma for like months and months. And his dad, my teacher, went there every day. Every day, spending all his entire days there. And um, eventually, there was a moment things shifted where the son came out of the coma. But at the same moment, his, his, his dad passed. So it makes you wonder what happened in terms of energy mm. exchange. Yeah, mm. But it, it's mm. clear to me that he gave his life for his son. Mm. Uh, because it happened literally at the same moment, right? Oh, wow. It's, it's, getting it's, uh, like, very, I'm, getting, I'm getting goosebumps, pimples. Really that's amazing that's story, beautiful. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I love the story. I, ha I, ha I remember Dolores telling me, oh, yeah, you spent all day on the, on the sofa. Yes, that, that was she said, she said, you have to do something that's got something to do with sleeping. Because... Yeah this is what you're really good at. And, then, yeah. <laughs> and, then and it's funny it. because even on the energetic level, I didn't know that, that back then, but before I learned hypnosis, we would go to some workshops and whenever I would get a bit um, out of my comfort zone in terms of having to share or come, come out with my own story, right? I would put everybody to sleep. Like the, I would shut down the class, everybody would be asleep and the teacher was like, okay, what happened here? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Interesting. So interesting. <laughs> Very cool. So, um, what? What actually? I want to go and um, take you a little bit towards uh, the um, modality you're doing now. So you're doing your yeah. method, because and you're doing that more now, um, despite being obviously a very talented uh, hypnotherapist. Can you give us a clue? Yes. What? Well, first I do it more for practical reasons. Uh, I can do it online very easily. And um, 
Um, and also, well, also to give you a little background with the UN method. So I started to walk to pick up where, where I stopped with my story when, when I started mm. to work at Balance Health in Hong Kong. Like pretty much two or three months uh, after I joined the clinic, uh, they brought Dr. Yun in Hong Kong to teach the class. So I, of course I knew about it. And, um, and it came at the point in our lives with Dolores and we had a group of friends also in Hong Kong where, where we, we played together. We were all wondering why things had to take so long to shift, right? Because all those different modalities we learned, you spend an hour session to address one thing. Mm. And quite often after, you would have like a process of releasing, like a healing crisis, whatever. And if you didn't have that healing crisis, it was not a good session, things like that. Mm. So we're all wondering why does it have to be so long? Why can't we just shift it, right? And all those mod modalities, they all work very, very well, right? There's mm. no question about mm. that. It's just that. The, the, the process and we're like questioning that so dr young came and his speech was that well instant resolution like uh we're like okay that's the answer so we went to the demo and it was pretty amazing so we signed up for the class and, and so on so eventually i, I certified with, with him in 2010 to, uh, and since then i've been teaching also on, on top yeah. of some clients and well i learned with you i mean it was a great yeah. it was a very and, interesting and, and and still to this day i find that it's really the the sharpest tool in my in my toolbox uh, because it's so easy so simple so quick and and of course you can still blend it with other things and um, um, very quickly we, we we started to use it uh, for ourselves on, on a daily basis pretty much right and if something is not uh, working the way we like or we're disturbed by it we, we just tune in and see what's what's going on there and the cool thing is that it can be really quick <clears throat> so you don't need to sit down for an hour or half an hour just couple minutes you can shift a lot of things right right so we really used it all the time and we still use it all the time now mm. so what's the difference between like i mean if i were to try to ask you it's a difficult question uh because we find it hard to to view ourselves and yeah. um there's also a bias about knowledge but if you think about when you started and when you practice now what's the difference because essentially the methods the same but obviously something something will have changed how, how do you yes. feel so first of all when i started i had no idea what i was doing first of all that's a <laughs> it took me a few workshops to actually get to a point where i was oh that's what we're doing okay. and uh, because dr yun is obviously really good at it but it's not really about explaining step by step how to do it right so you have to kind of grasp it or too bad for you hmm. um but looking back at how things evolved well um, it's still the same. The core is the same. It's about uh, clearing those energetic weaknesses, right? So mm. talk about energy. Everything, everything is energy. So energy, it's like it's duality. It's can either it can support you and then you're strong, or it can weaken you and then you're weak. And and my take is that our natural state is to be strong. No things should technically weaken us. The fact is there are lots of things weakening us. And it's not about it's good or bad. It's because the energy is what it is and that's the nature of energy that it can either support you or weaken you. So all I do since the beginning is I tune in and I find out what is weakening me or my clients. And I, when, I, when I find that, I shift it so it's not weakening. And you're so, doing that faster now, do you feel? Or, yes, or more accurately? Definitely. Definitely that well. So the core is the same. We go from weak to strong. What has changed is obviously the, the, the level of confidence and how fast I go, of course. Yeah. Great. And, uh, Fantastic. That's great. So, yeah. so what, what has been like now you've done it for, well, like I'm thinking 20 years. Uh, Close sorry. to 20 years. Yeah. yeah. So um, What's been one of the most impressive things that you've experienced that you could share with people that might, I mean, I, like, don't be afraid of this yeah. is outside their experience. They just, they're just not going to believe it. The first guy that I had on Lynn Buchanan, something went through something else physically, like a physical object went through a physical object without breaking that physical object. So that, that's to me is possible. And I'm just going to leave it up there. I'm like, when I'm not going to judge yeah. it, like people it's, can believe you or not believe you. It's totally possible, of course. I did not witness it. Open, though. No. The thing is for me, because I, I looked at the question earlier and it, it takes me out of my neutrality in a way because I, I mean, we see miracles all the time. And yes. it's not miracles. It's just 
things shifting, right? So it's almost like a, it's a tough question to go back and, and try to identify, to, to look, to go back in time and, and put myself out of neutrality to be, oh, that's, that's incredible, that's crazy, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I see things all the time on the physical level. Um, I mean, yeah, cancer disappears and, and bones are for fractured are not fractured anymore. And then, well, the doctors right. say, oh, we made a and mistake. You're talking like very fast, talking like a day or, or uh, whatever. Talking like instantly. I mean, you have a session with someone and, and they're scheduled for surgery and, and they go back for the surgery and they're like, oh, wait a minute, we made a mistake in your x-rays. It's not yours. Go home. You don't need surgery. Right. Okay. It's a coincidence, maybe, but it happens quite often in my uh, reality, right? Well, yeah, I mean, so that's, that's physical. Yeah. Then there's the non physical stuff, too, right? I mean, people who come to see me and uh, someone, uh, I don't know, like um, um, relationships. Like, I remember this girl in Hong Kong. She had been divorced for like seven years, I think, and she didn't have one relationship in those seven years. So she came to see me and she said, Well, I think I'd like to have a relationship now. Um, I said, okay, so we do a session with her and she goes, forget about her. She probably forgets about me too, but she comes back six months later and I'm like, oh, and I forgot what we worked on. Like, and she's like, oh, I'd like to lose weight. I'm like, okay. And we start losing, doing the session and very quickly, it's like, it come back to me that we worked on her having a relationship. And I'm like, okay, but it looks like you're, you're having a, a purpose about in terms of relationship. She's like, oh yeah, I'm getting married next month. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. This is, Simple things, right? And relationships also, I remember working on someone who wanted a relationship, but she did not like to go out and literally going out, like not, I'm not, not clubbing or whatever, just go out of the house. She would stay home all the time. I would say, oh, let's work on it. A couple of weeks later, the neighbor just moved in downstairs. He came because he needed some salt or milk or whatever. And they started a relationship. <laughs> I mean, wow. and she didn't have to go out. He literally came to her. Um, mm. So all these things happen like it's, um, mm. I remember a very interesting experience for me. Uh, a few years ago, the, this person in Singapore had a um, phobia of uh, different phobias, but noises and going out, which they go hand in hand, right? So he would stay home and he couldn't go out and he didn't go out for like years. Uh, he had a family and mm -hmm. his wife was, was a friend with a client of mine. So that's how she emailed me and she said, can you have a session with him? Except he doesn't speak English. I'm like, okay, sure. I do a session remote. I do sometimes where you send me the, the issues and I walk on it and yeah. that's it. And, and he insisted to be on the call, right? So I did like a Skype session with him. He was looking at me and I knew he had no idea what I was talking about. So I spent an hour talking to him, but really was talking to myself. It was mm -hmm. kind of a weird experience. And I, I remember ending the session was like, that's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't feel mm. so great about the, the, the whole experience here somehow. Mm. It's bizarre. And two weeks later, I got an email from his wife saying, it's, it's amazing. We're going on holidays next week. It's the first time he actually wow. went out. And, and I was yes. like, okay, we're talking about energy here, right? Because right. quite often after when I do a session with people, they're like, oh, it feels good talking with you or listening to you. Yes, it does feel good, but because it's more than just words. And yes, words have also the, their weight and they, they have their... They have their uh, mm. triggers and mechanism of healing, but mm. it goes beyond clearly. And that, for me, that was a, that, that was a bit of a, uh, um, how do we say, like a, a shift in the sense Cathartic. of how I really perceived it. Because not mm. that I was questioning it, but it was really like in my face that it's not about the, the talking, right? Yeah, I mean, you, so I, you, you're traveling, you're in Singapore, you, you've been, you teach in Singapore sometimes, you teach in Hong Kong. Uh, you're yeah. you're traveling around the world. I mean, you're basically. You, can I say to people like, if you want um, a class with Julian, and you get enough people together, For you sure. know, can I say that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, I I also should say, I was very very lucky um, to learn with you. Um, I should also say uh, that you're doing online classes, aren't you? Yes. Right. How yeah, do you I find mean, that people get on with those classes? So they, is it a bit di more difficult? Or? No, it's different, obviously. But the, 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 the main uh, um, the bonus online is that well, it's spread out. So you, we do once a week for six weeks. Oh, it might be uh, even better, right. So it's different. I mean, the, the, when, when I do weekend, it's also quite powerful because you spend a whole weekend, you're in, you have no choice but to be in. 
Mm. So I mean, there are pros and cons on, on both sides, but the online, it's, it's more spread out. So you have time to assimilate. You also get the recording. Okay. So you can listen to it. Oh yeah. And um, so yeah, it's, it, it works right, quite well. Brilliant. Online. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, we've covered a lot. There was one thing that I'm, um, I've just become aware over years that I really feel so bad when somebody gets involved with somebody who's uh, disreputable. And I wanted you wanted to ask you if there's something you could say to, that would advise people about maybe what's what's not okay or what's a what's a bad yeah. signal if if you would meet somebody and they they started behaving yeah. in a certain way then definitely a big red flag yeah well first of all i don't think there's any um there's no mistakes first of all right so if if, if you if someone gets involved with someone that's not in integrity uh, it takes two to tango, right? So at some level, there is an agreement. So, uh, and, and teaching the UN method, was, it's, it's my role to be neutral, and I'm fairly neutral. And I, of course, get out of neutrality regularly. But sure. uh, so we're looking at that, um, there's no judgment uh, on, on either side, right? Even the person who's not in integrity, well, on a mental level, I dislike it, yes. But at some level, I trust that this person has his or her place there doing whatever they do, right? Um, in terms of signs, I don't know. I mean, it, it follow your heart. That's what I want to say, right? It feels good, go for it. And it's right. not for me to judge you if he's right or wrong. Um, I, so, feel, I feel like, like one thing I can say is um, if it's towards, if it's strengthening you as a person towards your yeah. neutrality, then it's kind of, it's kind of got a built-in safety mechanism. So if it's about weakening other people or harming other people, then there's certainly, I mean, wouldn't you say that's like, now you're, you're starting to run, go down a dark path? Yes. And I mean, yeah, I've known some people who went through some crazy paths, actually. Being right. like used and abused by some, some types of, gurus whatever you want to call them not that there's yeah. anything wrong with gurus some of them only uh, yeah, but yeah. when when well it's a very fine line i mean what what is acceptable what is not and i don't know it's it's a tricky one to uh because judgment is there i mean uh, if i decide what's right or wrong for someone else it's the same as someone in my circle saying oh what you do is, is voodoo shady or whatever well, mm. it is for, not for me right so I find it very tricky, uh, this, and judgment is always present. So, I mean, obviously when someone is suffering, but again, even if someone is suffering, is it for me to, to take, take them out of suffering? I don't know. And it's, what, it's the same question that I have. It's, I don't question it, but that's what I do when I do my sessions. Uh, all I do is I strengthen people, right? I don't tell them you should do this. Don't do that. Right. Um, and sometimes it's, it's really tempting, right? It's when it's so obvious, someone comes and they, that says they're obese, they want to lose weight, and all they do is stay on their bed eating chips. I want to say, well, maybe you should introduce like a carrot now and then, or whatever, like, and mm. reduce the consumption of chips and maybe stand up and do a little bit of mm. movement. That's my mind talking, and, and well, that's my belief, that's my filter, of course. But is it for me to tell that to the person? That's not what I'm, I'm paid for. What I'm paid for is to, to clear those weaknesses and to bring that person to neutrality so that the doors open and it's up to them if they go through the door or not. So it's a bit the same here when, when I see someone in a situation that's really tricky. I mean, if it's a friend or someone that I know, of course, I'm, I'm, I may share my, my thoughts. But really, if, I, if I'm honest with myself, I don't know if it's, if it's for me to tell them yes or no, right? It's not, mm. first of all. And, Okay. It's their experiences. We say there is no, uh, there is no bad experience. It's all about experience, right? So, right, um, right. Well, it's an so, interesting answer. I mean, I'm certainly enjoyed the answer. And I think a lot of people will. So, you know, I mean, I don't think there's a, a right or wrong answer. And you know, I think yes, it's a, it's a tough uh, learning experience if you've gone through, yeah. you know, abuse of a uh, cult yeah, and, and really um, tough, yeah. and, uh, um, betrayal, and you you know and they use yeah. the term energy work you know and uh, um yeah but you, you find these people in all, all 
different uh, levels again, right? So you, you have energy workers who do that. You have like shrinks. You have doctors. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. It, it, there's there's a corporate corporate cultures, it's everything. But I think yeah. um, for me, it just feels like um, uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting aspect yeah. to just to raise and say, okay, we raise it. We've got an opinion about it. And we can give people a little bit of advice. And your advice was work on your on your neutrality. So, if, if, yeah. so you're you feel free and you don't get yeah. caught up in other people's weaknesses and so on. Yeah, very and, cool. And just just as a side note, when we talk about neutrality, because very often people misunderstand what what it is to be neutral. Right? It's quite often they associate neutrality with being uh, avo in avoidance. Uh, which is not at all what it is, right? Because when I say I'm neutral to someone else suffering, it bothers people. They say, oh, you don't care. So it's nothing to do with caring. Mm. So that energetically, I'm not thrown out of my, of my uh, strengths, right? And mm. from there, I can actually assist people. Because, uh, and, and if you have someone in, around you who is in, in, a, in a situation where they're suffering, um, the best help you can give them is to be strong for them, right? Yeah, because if you all like in in in, uh, in compassion that is not supporting them, meaning if you're weak yourself because oh poor you and so on, it's not going to help them, right? No, or judging no. them, so this is wrong. Don't do that. Don't do... If you're neutral and in that you're in your strengths, that's the be be best way you can help them because they have a safe place for, to go if they're ready for it. Excellent. That's that's great advice, and uh, I think everybody everybody can take that to heart. Okay, mate. Well, it's been fantastic um, talking to you. I hope um, people can connect with you through consciouslyhappy.com. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And you're on Facebook. Um, yes. You've got a you've got a newsletter that you send out regularly, and you have you have you don't just have online classes. You also have groups and so on. Yeah, um, we have a lot of free free uh, webinars as well. Um, right. We have every month. We have what we call the spiritual cafe. The last Monday of every month, so it's free and open to all. Mm. Um, and on top of that, we, depending on what's going on, so right now we're doing pretty much every week, we're doing some free uh, webinars for people. Mm. Um, so yeah, check the websites, stay tuned for free stuff. And if you want to go deeper, of course, we have paid uh, offers as well. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I can recommend, I can recommend uh, both, honestly. Um, it was, uh, yeah. I, I forget, I cannot remember um, being in, I remember being in your class, just, just as an anecdote coming from me, um, and somebody had a problem, and they said, I've got this problem, I don't know, I, 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 when I think of this, whatever, whatever it was, and you did the, um, your session on it, and then you said, how do you feel? And they said, about what? And they actually couldn't remember what it was that they were yeah. bothered about. It's just so yeah. t completely gone. Um, neutrality. And, right. Well, I mean, later having studied um, psychology, you know, as a bachelor, as a, science, as a scientist, that's just not possible. And of course it is. I know it's possible. I've seen it so, yeah. so many times. So it's just a, a wonderful story. And I hope, um, I hope, you can reach more people through um, through our little yeah. meeting here. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for having me. <laughs>